<laughs> why that is a good question why uh, we've been taken uh, from the from Warsaw fighting Warsaw in Warsaw uh, uprising and uh, we've been taken first to Prushkov that was uh, like a <coughs> temporary camp camp uh, from where the people they've been uh, designed to go to one camp or other camp our uh, bad luck it was uh, Auschwitz and uh, it happened on the 12th of uh, September, uh, August in 1944. Uh, and uh, me, my mother, my father, and one uh, lady who lived with us, all of us, we went. Actually, we didn't know where we are going. My father realized, you know, on the way, that it's a uh, direction uh, Auschwitz, and it was a shock. It was a shock. Why they took us? Very difficult to say. Probably uh, the parents, they've been denunciated uh, by some confident, because my father uh, and my mother they've been actors. And they had uh, like a restaurant club called Gospoda Wuchengov in Warsaw. And it was like a meeting point for uh, activists who helped a lot, uh, especially Jewish ghetto. Uh, why Jewish ghetto? Because my father, as an actor, he was helping his colleagues. It was whole action. You know, action helping, you know, uh, collecting money for them, collecting medicaments, the arm. It was a really very, very, you know, big action. And on the top of everything, uh, my father, he had a very good friend, girlfriend from Krakow. Father was from Krakow. And uh, she was Jewish. And uh, she was activist, and uh, unfortunately, he landed in the prison called Montelupich, very bad prison. But my father managed with a group of colleagues from uh, underground army to take her out. But uh, in this situation, they couldn't stay in Krakow. Uh, father said, no, no, I'm taking you to Warsaw. And uh, my dad, um, managed to marry her with his friend, Kot Beczkowski. She <laughs> received the Catholic papers, and she was a very good Catholic. Wife of the Polish count, of course, no Jewish. In Warsaw, of course, you know, she worked with Zegota, with Mrs. Szczutska, and Dali, but still uh, living in our apartment. Maybe somebody denunciated Maybe somebody denunciated my father for his action in ghetto. We don't know. I learned about that, you know, years ago after uh, next century, but that it's a different story. And they took us to Auschwitz, in Auschwitz. Probably you would like to know what I remember. Not a lot, but sufficiently enough. Of course, we arrived to Birkenau to this famous uh, Yiddish camp, uh, which was not only for Jewish, it was always for us also, because all transports from Poland, especially Poland from Warsaw uprising, uh, was four transports, all of them arrived to this ramp. And there was no special treatment for us. It was exactly the same like for others, with the one exception, uh, the direction wasn't straightforward to the Komora gas, but to the camp. And of course, the, the women and men, they've been separated, and the children too. And uh, that was a really, for me, it was a horrifying moment. Just separation from parents in, in the place I didn't know, full of shouts, screaming. 
the language I didn't know, the dogs, you know, this big, you know, generalization dogs. It was just horrible. It pushing us, you know, rouse, 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 schnell, schnell. But anyhow, we landed in one block from the documents which we have from the uh, Museum uh, Auschwitz Birkenau archives. I was uh, in three different blocks. And two of them doesn't exist anymore, but one is still uh, exists. And in these blocks, of course, you know, completely strange environment, different faces, no mum, nothing, what's to do? No doll, no, uh, no fancy dress, no uh, warm uh, bath. Horrible, just horrible. And child who cried, whoop, whacking. There was no special tariff, you know, the small children, uh, we had a really bad life. You know, like a children, you know, uh, uh, when we wanted to go to the toilet. Toilet was far away, uh, another part in the block. Nobody could accompany us, no. of course, you know, peeing in the pants, of course. Then, you know, uh, the penalty was uh, difficult, you know, tearing the earth and so. Uh, well, but not only couple, not only, you know, uh, Stammlager woman, they've been also the older ch children. But I, I, I have nothing against them, but it was just to survive. Just to survive. That means, you know, uh, we have to be very careful, little children, you know, uh, to take care of our little piece of bread. Because just one moment, non-attention, and bread gone. <laughs> and uh, it was difficult, really difficult. And then, uh, for some reason, I wasn't very well, and uh, I was taken on the Revere, it's uh, like a hospital, where uh, the big uh, master was Dr. Mengele. And here started my problem, uh, most probably because I was, you know, very, you know, undisciplined child. Uh, Dr. Mengele found out that, you know, uh, I look nice, you know, blonde girl with a curly hair and, you know, blue eyes. And maybe with a, you know, human attention or, you know, I don't know why. He brought me an, an apple. This story I know from the doctors from this block. And he gave me this apple. I was on the third layer of this uh, preacher, how we call it. And I took this apple, crushed on this apple, and just thrown on Mengele. And I said, push, cop. Of course, you know, uh, I received my lesson, hard lesson. I was beaten, kicking, you know, and uh, almost probably killed me, you know, this horrible child of Polish bandits. But I survived. Of course, you know, I was uh, under this, uh, his uh, pseudo-medicaments. Mm, uh, until today, my lungs, uh, um, they are destroyed. It took me about three years, you know, to recuperate after the Auschwitz, uh, just to be, you know, uh, in the more or less, you know, uh, correct health. But whole life I really suffered, you know, uh, for my li lungs. Of course, you know, what's to do? There was a camp. It was after the camp. It wasn't very easy for us Polish people because from one total, total regime, we drop into other one. Difficult to say which one was the worse or better, but it wasn't a fun. Honestly, I have to say that nobody took care of uh, old prisoners. I remember uh, when I met my mother, it was in 1948, that's mean, three years after liberation of camp. 
and uh, it was in a sanatorium in uh, Rapka. Why I know that was Rapka? Because I, I still have a certificate from this place. And uh, the ladies, the nurses, they called me and they said, Basia, you know, you have a guest. Of course, they dressed me up, you know, nice dress, uh, what? And they said, look, this lady here, it's your mother. And then, of course, you know, I was laughing. I said, what? One more mother? Why? Because, you know, since myself and other children who left Auschwitz, and they've been in different, you know, uh, kindergarten or different sanatorium hospitals, all of nurses, all of people, all of them, they've been our mothers, mother, na, mamushka, zoshka, and tak dalej. And then I said, no, no, one more. I said, oh, no, 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 no. And then my mother, she said to me, I am your mother. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, it was horrible. You know, I never wish anybody, no single mother and single child, what happened. And I said, well, if you are my mother, you know, then you have to prove me. And this proof stayed till she passed away. Like children, like daughter. You did something wrong, mother. I was back screaming. And then I was always telling to my mother, if you would be my mother, you would never do it to me. Can you imagine the drama of my mother? It was horrible drama. But it was a sequence of uh, Auschwitz, what we did, that we lost completely the notion of the family. And to, we couldn't believe anything, you know. Uh, you know, we've been very careful what people said to us, you know. We never trust them. And uh, it stays with me until today that I am very careful, you know, to trust people because it's just, you know, it's something, oh, it's like a warning, like a flash. And that is a problem. It's a difficult question, but uh, I think that we should teach the young generation. We should tell them the truth. We shouldn't hide the history. Because you can't twist the history. Impossible. I know that sometimes could be very blessing. Very unhandy to maybe one part. But we should tell the young generation the history. I know that it's very difficult. Because these days, the young people, they said, oh, you know, the war, you know, will never happen, you know, behind, never happened to us. Uh, I already heard that several times, and it might happen. Because I know it's a difficult subject to the children, but they must know, you know, person who doesn't know history of his own country. What you can say about this person? It's a complete ignorant. Mm. Okay, it's a, yeah, like a, you know, uh, protection uh, psychiatrist. Oh, no, 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 they are too, too young. It's too blessing them, you know. Oh, no, 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 they must have a happy life. Yes, yes, but why they have a happy life today? Because what happened in previous century? And they should do everything possible that will never happen again. Unfortunately, it happens. Not every year, every minute. Because the war goes on everywhere. It didn't stop in 1945. Not the same war, but very similar wars, everywhere, in Asia, in Middle East, in Africa. 
And now I am asking what we did to stop it, to prevent it. Nobody can stop it. We have organizations like the United Nations. We have, you know, f f uh, military organizations. Yeah. We have God knows how many advisors. We have a Pagwash who was a body called uh, to help the governments to solve the war problems. Nothing works. Nothing works. That means I think that with the education and talking to the young generation, but honestly talking on the open discussion, maybe we can do something. Oh, it's a long story. It's a long story which I discovered uh, in 2007, I think. Uh, one day, one of uh, my friends, actually the uh, godfather of my daughter, he gave me a gift, a book. Uh, in English, the title, it will be My War. This book was uh, actually written in German and translated into Polish. And uh, I went through this book and I said, oh my goodness, you know, I wish that I would read this book years, years ago when my parents had been alive. Who was Joe Heidecker? Joe Heidecker, it was a person whom my father met before the war. He was a film producer, his father as well. Actually, he was an artist, photographer. Ossilman. Uh, he was Jewish origin, must be Jewish origin, because one of his uh, names was Isaac. It, but he never talked about. But Isaac, it is explanation. And uh, he didn't want to go to the army. And his family, they managed that he was uh, sent to Poland as a, I would say, public uh, relation officer. And uh, one day he discovered that my father, he handles the restaurant cabaret where Germans couldn't uh, enter. It was a big sign on this Gospoda Wuchengów not for Germans. He put his civil clothes and he went. And of course, my father spotted him in the corner, took him outside. And father said, what you are you doing in Poland? And he said, yeah, I am here as a public relation officer observer. And as he was a very, you know, big enemy of uh, Hitler, Terry, his wife too. And he said, you know, it's a ghetto and I would like to help the Jewish colleagues in the ghetto. Is it possible? Can you help me? My dad said, of course, you know, we will organize that. And this uh, man, my father called him Julius. And he, they been going to ghetto. They helped a lot of uh, Jewish actors. Uh, one of them was Vera Gran, uh, was Spielman, and others, of course, you know, collecting money for them, uh, uh, medicaments, uh, whatever, and taking a lot of photos. Of course, you know, if the Gestapo will catch uh, Heidecker for these photos, you know, probably <laughs> he will end, like all of Poles, you know, will be shot, that's all. And uh, the diapositive uh, of this photo, they've been hidden by my father. Of course, you know, a big risk. 
especially that uh, father also uh, had ho at home, you know, Jewish lady. But anyhow, it worked very well. And then suddenly, mm, also it was a wife of Heidegger. It's a very, uh, very amazing story and uh, really fantastic story. The Marion Heidegger, she worked in Berlin and uh, in the general quarter of Hitler. And through her, Joe Heidecker, my father was going underground, a lot of news. And also other side. Uh, Joe, in his book, uh, he says, you know, from Jenek, was the name of my father, I learned about concentration camps, or all horrors happened to Polish people. And he wrote in this book. And also, in this book, uh, he was uh, writing quite a lot about his wife, Marion. And about a week before the Warsaw Uprising started, he was moved uh, somewhere else. He came back uh, at the last week of the Warsaw Uprising, but the whole period he was away. At the meantime, my father was taken to Auschwitz, and of course they lost the truck. My father, he went to different camps, from Auschwitz he was sent to other camps. So finally he uh, ended in uh, Dachau Buchenwald, you know, he has the papers. Then he worked for the uh, American army. He was a translator when they've been liberating different camps. My father, he spoke a very good German. And finally, he was uh, hired by the Polish mission uh, in uh, München. And of course, uh, he was uh, taking care of the transports coming back to Poland or going somewhere else as a prisoner wished. And the last transport in 48, uh, my father came back to Poland. And then I have to say what he said several times. That was the most stupid decision he took in his life. Because he came back to Poland he was so idiot, naive. He saw that it will be like it was before the war, and it was a red regime, which my father couldn't stand. He was a, in the before the war. He was on the Russian war. He was a big uh, enthusiast of Piłsudski, and uh, of course, for him, he, it was the word he couldn't understand. And of course, he suffered a lot uh, in his profession because uh, a lot of actors, uh, they became party members. My father, he said, no, no, no way, you know, impossible. I will never do it. And of course, uh, he, he had the difficulties to find the job. But anyhow, he was an artistic director in uh, Katowice, in Gliwice, in different places. And uh, even he was a director of the Polish Circus Festival. He has to make money somewhere. My mother uh, also was difficult to find the job, but uh, she was a dancer, an actress. Uh, it was easier for her. That was our life after the war. And then the book came, and then I learned what they did during the war, because I never wanted to talk, nothing, just a little bit. And I said, my goodness, why they never said a word? And finally, when I went through this book, the introduction to this book was written by Mr. Bartoszewski. And a very nice one uh, with a lot of compliments to the authors. 
even writing that was his best friend, whatever it is. And they said, okay, you know, if Mr. Bertoszewski was best friend, probably could uh, give me some information about the uh, lady who lived with uh, Mr. Heidegger during class 20 years before he passed away. Then I can learn something about it too. And then one day I asked Mr. Bartoszewski, I don't know in which occasion, I think it was in Auschwitz somewhere, and he said, oh, you know, yes, oh, that was a, my really good friend. And I said, yes, but you know, in this book, you know, he said a lot of, about my father. Oh, really? I said, yes, and you know, Mr. Heidegger says that it was uh, his very good friend, my father. And I said, probably he had a couple of friends. And then I asked, uh, may I somehow meet Mrs. Krauss, Mara Krauss? Oh no, she's an old lady, you know, she has Alzheimer. She's in the old house, old people house. And I said, okay, you know, I gave up, you know, because, you know, what to do, you know, if somebody has Alzheimer, you know, probably I will never learn anything. And then one day, you know, it was about 2000, maybe 12 or 13, I don't remember well. Mm. Uh, on the internet, I found the oil picture, which was really nice, I liked it. And then uh, it was signed Heidegger. I said, oh, not as many Heideckers on this world. It was an email contact, and then I sent email. And I said that I am searching, uh, maybe you are from this family. Two, three hours after I received an email from Mrs. Kraus, Mara Kraus. She was still living in Austria, in Vienna. She worked for the Vienna television. She worked as a translator. Of course, she was in certain age, but a very, very nice lady. But uh, she couldn't travel anymore. I took a plane, I went to Vienna and we met. And then she taught me a lot of stories. And uh, she said, yes, you know, uh, your parents, they've been really fine people. And uh, she said to me, but do you know that Marion, she was your uh, godmother? I said, what? Yes. I said, oh my goodness, because I knew that somebody else is my godmother. And then, you know, she told me a story about Marion Heidecker. She passed away, Marion, in 1958, something like that. And the Mara Kraus, she said to me, I will send you uh, the articles uh, after her death. Press clippings. And uh, when I went through them, I was proud that she was my grandmother, godmother really such a superlatives. I don't know why they didn't took her to the concentration camp somewhere. As German, bitching like a hell against Hitler after the war as well. But I never met her. I just have a photos with her taken by Joe. And then uh, Mrs. Kraus, she said to me, but do you know that Joe was in Poland? I said, hey, just a woman. In 1995, he was invited to the Polish television to um, turn the documentary on the Warsaw Ghetto. And he found my mother. And he went with her, with all this camera, with cameramen, etc. But uh, I just know the story from Mara Kraus. My mother just kicked him out. And I said, I, I don't know anything, you know. Let me to call my brother. Probably he will tell, something, tell me something. And then I called my brother. And my brother said, yes, but I was in Geneva with you. Yes, something happened. But you know, the guys came from television. But you know, mother wasn't very well, and you know, and uh, they didn't announce their visit. You know, actress, you know, she must be makeup, you know, nicely dressed, etc. Of course, you know, what's happened? 
And apparently, uh, Joe Heidecker came back to Vienna and uh, he said to Mara, he said, why Irena did to me? What's happened? What's happened? Why she hates me such you know, that he doesn't want to see me? I can't reply, but my brother explained the situation. And then uh, afterwards, uh, when my mother came back, uh, my mother, she said, you know, they gave me, you know, envelope. Or I don't know what is in this envelope. You know, somebody came from the television. And my mother said, oh, never mind. He even did, she even didn't open it. And my mother, she had her secret suitcase. In this suitcase, she kept all this, you know, her little treasury. Just put away, plug the suitcase. And with, when she passed away in 2000, with my brother, we opened this secret suitcase. And we found this envelope. We opened the photos. Lovely photos of me. I must be, must be summertime in 1941. I must be about maybe six, maybe, maybe eight months old. That's mean, you know, uh, only one picture, you know, of me, you know, from this age. And with uh, Joe Heidecker, with his uh, wife, Marian, voila, whole story, whole story. That's mean, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, it happened that uh, the ex-prisoners, uh, survivors from uh, Auschwitz, uh, not only Polish, but uh, also survivors from Holocaust, years and years after the war, the next century, they found the stories about themselves, which they never expected. That's mean, you know, this war for us never ended. You know, when I seen this photo, when I seen this story, when I talked to Mara Kraus, everything came back. Came back, you know, I was imagining how it was. That's mean, you know, but like me, probably it's hundreds of people on this world. Maybe today somebody else discovered, somebody found somewhere the photos of his, her family. And then behind it's a whole story. That's mean why we have to teach. And we should tell because these photos, these documents, they are the best witnesses. That's all.